Policing is essential in all societies. From maintaining law and order to protecting human rights and fundamental freedoms, the work of the police strengthens security and stability across a country. But in this digital age, traditional methods of policing have become more challenging. Intelligence-led policing, or ILP, is a modern law enforcement model that aims to change this. Harnessing data and information from a wide range of open and official sources, it can help law enforcement agencies to identify links, patterns and trends, prevent serious incidents or provide long-term insights on threats faced by the public. Already implemented in several countries, intelligence-led policing aims to put the crime fighters one step ahead of the criminals. The OSCE has developed an intelligence-led policing model designed to help law enforcement services work together to share data so crucial information is never missed. Intelligence-led policing differs from the pervasive mass surveillance where everyone's personal data may be at risk of being misused. Instead, it uses approved and lawful collection methods that target just the data and information necessary for each law enforcement task. The model ensures that rigorous safeguards and independent oversight are in place to uphold international and national law, ensuring that human rights are protected and that the public's data cannot fall into the wrong hands. The scope of the intelligence-led policing goes beyond its use for serious and organized crime. Intelligence-led policing can be applied to all areas of policing, from burglary, theft or vandalism, to addressing violent extremism, or ensuring public safety at major events. Intelligence-led policing works on three levels. On the local level, through individual police stations or community policing, the regional level, covering several local areas, and the national level. These three levels are connected through their criminal intelligence units and departments. Information is shared between departments at managerial coordination meetings and used as the basis for decisions on police investigations and operations. The intelligence-led policing model recommends setting up one multi-agency national criminal intelligence department in each country, which has access to information obtained at all three levels. The National Criminal Intelligence Department is staffed with representatives from key state agencies and offices, such as the National Security Authority, Customs and Border Control, the Tax Authorities, and Prison and Probation Services. Each agency can share information from its databases with others, following clear legal procedures. Pooling information from all these public sources can give law enforcement authorities the advantage they need to make arrests and seize criminal profits or prevent serious terrorist incidents. The National Criminal Intelligence Department is responsible for conducting regular national threat assessments and presenting them to governmental authorities. This is where the strategic process of intelligence-led policing begins. Decision makers at the state level will lay out policing priorities and allocate resources based on the national threat assessment. Next, it will fall to the senior law enforcement officers of each agency to implement the strategic goals. Information from investigations and operations are then fed back to the police information systems to clarify the intelligence picture and serve as a basis for new actions. In the case of drug trafficking, for example, community policing officers might receive information of an increase in the supply of narcotics and the falling prices to street-level users. Police officers and crime analysts then start to proactively collect information from all available sources within their communities, such as cooperation partners, police records, witness statements and police informants. As they evaluate and analyse the data, an intelligence picture of the street-level distribution begins to emerge. The analysts draft criminal intelligence reports, which are shared with their regional and national counterparts through the intelligence-led policing communication processes. Analysts on the national level collect all the local information and link it to other existing intelligence. 
Any gaps in the intelligence are identified and will need to be filled in order to create an investigation plan. Analysis results are then drafted in a report and shared with the detectives and senior officers. Once the senior officers have evaluated the analysis, it will be transformed into a plan of action. The details of identified suspects are sent to neighboring countries and international law enforcement organizations, revealing that the same suspects are active in neighboring countries. The decision is then made to start an international joint investigation by the countries in question. This can lead to the location and arrest of the leaders of an international organized crime group active in the trafficking of drugs, trafficking in human beings and smuggling of light weapons. All of these investigations and arrests have been triggered by the original local information on street-level drug supply received by community policing officers. This local information can provide the vital piece of the puzzle in preventing serious crime and terrorist incidents, building up through the mechanisms of the intelligence-led policing to create a comprehensive picture of crime within the nation and beyond. As the criminal world becomes more complex, it's crucial that law enforcement agencies have the best tools at their disposal and combine their efforts. With intelligence-led policing, law enforcement can move from reacting to crime to proactively tackling criminal organizations and repeat offenders, identifying and protecting vulnerable individuals and keeping the public safe.